Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Red Adolescence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it and I hope that this video finds you well. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at one of the newest fragrances by the company John Varvatos and this one is called John Varvatos XX or Roman numeral 20 Artisan. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my fragrance review of John Barbados XX or 20 Artisan, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you like fragrance reviews here on YouTube, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and pretty much anything having to do with fragrances, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, please remember to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. This way, whenever I do put out these videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Now, now here is a fragrance that came out a little bit earlier on this year. I know there were actually two fragrances, a pairing of fragrances that were released this year. I've had the opportunity to review the other one. I'm going to leave a link to it uh, up here. And of course, that one also has the Roman numeral 20 in its name. But here we're going to be reviewing 20 Artisan. And so this obviously commemorates the 20 year anniversary of the brand. And I originally dismissed this fragrance because of the similarity in the presentation with one of its previous releases. And of course, with a name like 20 Artisan, I thought this was just a limited edition of the fragrance Artisan until I actually smelled it and I realized that they are quite different. And so now it warrants its own review and I'm actually really excited to give you my thoughts on it. And this one contains much different ingredients from the original. The original also had this spicy, aromatic, orangey thing going on in there, but this one does things much differently with notes of Sichuan pepper and vetiver and wormwood and bitter orange. And so I'm really excited to give you my thoughts on the smell. Let's start things off with the presentation. So the box for this one is rather simple. You just have this graphic here on the front. You also have the name of the fragrance towards the bottom, the size, the concentration. And on the very bottom, you will find the UPC, the ingredients, the made information, the expiration date, and of course the batch code, which is punched into the box. Now the bottle for this one is absolutely gorgeous. I really do feel as though this is one of the best presentations on the market for a designer fragrance. Of course, it does look similar to some of their older presentations, but this one is completely silver and it also has this metallic lustrous sheen to it, which I think is really nice. You also have this studded design on the perimeter of the cap, which I think is a really nice touch and also an homage to rock and roll culture. And you have the name of the fragrance engraved into the cap. Now the bottom of the bottle has a sticker with all of your information on it and the cap for this fragrance clicks into place very securely so you can pick it up from the cap and the distribution on the atomizer is nice and wide let's continue with the smell so in the opening of this fragrance you're going to get this dry spicy and peppery vetiver note now it's green right away but it's interesting because the green quality of it which is coming predominantly from the vetiver strikes a balance between the dirty, rooty, earthy vetivers, but also the bright, clean, and soapy vetivers. So it's right in the middle. I can't really say it's going in any which direction. When I smell this, it reminds me of a very clean version of Ancre Noir by Lalique, if that makes sense. There are also nuances in here from Grey Vetiver by Tom Ford. So if you're familiar with those types of vetivers, the ones that smell very refined, very elegant, very polished, but also a little daring as well, I think you're really going to enjoy this one. Now, I know it also contains wormwood, and wormwood is an ingredient that is used in absinthe, and I've tried some other wormwood dominant fragrances, and while I can say that I am picking Picking up on a little bit of it in here, it by no means overshadows the vetiver. The vetiver is definitely the strongest ingredient in here. Now, in terms of the Sichuan pepper note that's used in here, I can definitely see its influence. So it darkens up the vetiver somewhat. It makes it a little bit more on the rugged, rough and tumble and mysterious side as opposed to the 
you know, dressed up suit and tie, ultra polished side. I think there's an element of darkness about this fragrance. And I think it's also because of the utilization of specific citrus ingredients, like the bitter orange in the opening that contributes to that dry and sort of mysterious vibe that this perfume gives off. So basically, if you're a fan of vetiver based fragrances, if you like the vetivers that lean a little bit on the darker side, perhaps something like an Ancre Noir Sport, I think you're really going to enjoy this fragrance, but it's not overly woodsy. I think cedar is used as a note in here. It's not overly woodsy. It's not overly musky. So there are a lot of ingredients in the note breakdown that I'm perhaps not picking up on as much as I am some of the other ingredients, but definitely if you're a fan of vetiver, if you're a fan of some of those dry, earthy, uh, perfumes, I think you're really going to enjoy this one. So this is definitely much darker than Artisan, and let's face it, 2020 has been a darker year, uh, but Artisan is very bright and zesty. I know it has the marjoram in there. It has a lot of aromatic ingredients, but it also has a lot of citrus ingredients. And with this one, it's a little bit more inverted in terms of the no pyramid in the sense that it relies a lot more on those base heavy ingredients as opposed to those top heavy ingredients, thus stripping it from some of that citrusy prowess, but giving it more of a spotlight light in those base heavy ingredients like the vetiver and the cedar like I mentioned before. This is an awesome fragrance. I'm actually really enjoying this one. In terms of a designer release, I like how it's daring and I think that that's something that the company has done before with fragrances like Dark Rebel, Dark Rebel Writer, and so it's not afraid to take an artistic stance and to be daring and to do something that goes against the grain. And I think a lot of successful fragrances have done that in the past, whether we're thinking of Amen or Le Mal by Jean Pocotier. So I like the fact that this one does things a little bit different. It's not perhaps as daring as something like the 10th anniversary fragrance, uh, which I actually did purchase. Uh, I actually purchased several bottles of it back in the day. So it's not as dark and deep and resinous as that. But if you're looking for something a little bit more on the clean side, but still heavily reliant on those green earthy ingredients like vetiver, definitely check this out. I think it's going to be to your liking. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, despite the fact that I was able to compare it to some other fragrances like Grey Vetiver by Tom Ford or perhaps even Ancre Noir by Lalique, this one still stands out. It has this very specific dry quality about it that I think is really interesting and keeps me smelling it over and over again. And so it doesn't smell 100% similar to any other Vetiver fragrance that I've tried in the past. It definitely still stands on its own two legs. It is a unique fragrance. And the overall smell, despite the fact that it is vetiver heavy is very mass appealing. And so it has this quality about it that smells masculine. It smells a little bit rugged, but it's not offensive. You have to try it. It's actually really unique. And I think a part of me actually prefers it a little bit over the original Artisan. I know it might be sacrilege to say that because Artisan is such a classic fragrance from the brand, but I actually really enjoy this twist. In terms of the longevity, I got about seven hours on my skin. I have been testing this for the past week and a half to two weeks now since I acquired it. The projection on this fragrance is great for the first two hours of application. It did start to sit closer to the skin at that four hour mark. And so if you can bear with that, if that's not too light for your taste, I think you'll really enjoy the performance on this one. In terms of the versatility, very versatile. I think because of that subtle darkness about it, you can wear it in the colder weather, but I think because of that bitter orange and bright opening, you can wear it in the hotter weather as well. I think the price is affordable enough that you can wear it casually, but the vetiver adds this refined quality that I think allows it to be worn in a formal scenario as well. But I do think it leans a little bit masculine. But of course, these are just recommendations. At the end of the day, wear what you want, wear what makes you happy. But I find this to be a very versatile perfume. In terms of the presentation, absolutely gorgeous. I love that sort of metallic silvery look to it. And the, um, the way that it's woven with the um, appearance of this bottle, which is similar to some of the presentations that John Barbados has released in the past, but really gorgeous presentation with the studded perimeter on the cap here. My final verdict on this fragrance is if you are looking for a vetiver based fragrance, but you want something that smells different, if you're not afraid of some of the earthier performances of vetiver, if you're not afraid of some of the drier variations of vetiver, definitely check this one out. I think it's a solid release from the brand. And despite the fact that it is a named 
20 artisan and it's to commemorate their 20th anniversary i hope it's one that can still be found in the years to come because i think it's a really nice fragrance so there you have it ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining me today that was my review of john barbados 20 artisan if you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, all you have to do, is, of course, is click on that red button in the corner. And while you're at it, make sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. Thanks again for watching. I love you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye.